It's not every day that Apple releases a brand new product and platform. Vision Pro looks to be one of Apple's most ambitious projects to date, and it makes a bold statement about Apple's vision for the future of computing. As more of a software guy, I've been focusing more on Vision OS this past week. It's hard not to look at Vision OS and see a lot of the influence of the work Apple has been doing with iPad OS over the past few years. Based on the way Apple tends to operate, it's not hard to imagine how just the existence of Vision Pro may help the iPad going forward. While Vision OS, of course, has many specific accommodations for spatial computing, in some ways it looks very much like a derivative of iPad OS. In fact, Apple has apparently been telling reviewers that Vision OS is based on iPad OS. And that in and of itself is interesting. When the iPhone was announced, Steve Jobs proudly proclaimed, iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. And while that OS was eventually renamed iPhone OS for the product's launch, it's kind of interesting that we haven't had another Apple OS that has been directly derived from Mac OS. Newer operating systems have been derived from iOS, or in the case of Vision Pro, iPad OS. The connection is evident in some of the specific interactions that seem to have been carried over to Vision OS. Looking at the windowing system, we can see that Vision OS uses the same style of grab handle for resizing windows that iPad does when in Stage Manager. You do, however, get the added improvement of being able to grab the window from either the left or the right side, which is nice. Hopefully that comes to iPad one day. Interestingly, resizing iPad apps appears to be more limited than I expected. You can kind of stretch out the window to be larger, but it doesn't look like you're able to shrink the app into their tall, skinny iPhone app form like you can on iPad. Now, it might look weird, but the option would be nice to allow a user to fit more apps into their working space. And it's kind of amusing to me that just like on iPad OS, the settings app appears to not at all be resizable. With the Bluetooth keyboard attached, you're also able to hold down the command key and view all of the apps available keyboard shortcuts via that pseudo menu bar from iPad OS. In Vision OS 1.0, there's no mouse support, but if and when that does come, I would imagine it's gonna look more like iPad OS's mouse support than what Mac OS has. With the reported lack of developer interest in building native apps, and Mac apps only available through essentially remoting into a nearby Mac, the highest end apps that will likely be available for Vision Pro for a while are probably gonna be iPad apps. This is another instance of iPad apps seemingly being a key part of Apple's software strategy. In 2018, Apple launched an initiative called Mac Catalyst, which provided tooling for developers to take their existing iPad apps and more easily port them to the Mac. The idea was that it would encourage developers to build higher quality and more feature-rich iPad apps, and that in turn would result in more native Mac apps. While there is no iPad Catalyst for Vision Pro, the path for getting your iPad app onto the Vision Pro can be as simple as not unchecking a checkbox. Since Vision OS uses and extends the same frameworks that iPad OS and iOS use, it's relatively easy to convert a native iPad app to a native Vision OS app. From a developer's perspective, it may make more sense to continue to invest in their iPad app for the time being versus making a dedicated Vision OS app at least until we get a sense of the sales numbers. For each platform an app runs on, the developer potentially incurs additional support and maintenance costs, which may be harder to justify on a nascent platform with such a high entry price. Bloomberg reporter Mark Gurman hypothesized that Vision OS would run Apple's Pro apps, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, via their iPad app versions. This benefits iPad because supporting an additional platform, A, gives Apple an opportunity to collect more subscription revenue, which they'll love, and B, gives Apple further incentive to continue to build out these apps. If Apple's going to have to lean heavily on iPad apps to provide content for Vision Pro, then it behooves them to continue to make their iPad apps more capable and to keep providing the means for developers to do the same with their apps. In my mind, this also helps justify continuing to improve iPad OS. As we've seen with iPad, there's a very vocal contention of computer users that are obsessed with productivity and getting things done. If Apple's newest and most ambitious platform is to be taken seriously, it needs productivity features beyond it can just be a display for your MacBook. 
With the shared lineage of iPadOS and VisionOS, it makes more financial sense from an ROI perspective to develop more pro-level features and apps, since both platforms will benefit. After the iPad was released in 2010, Apple held a fall Mac-focused event called Back to the Mac. Steve Jobs spoke about how Apple took Mac OS X and then built iOS for the iPhone, then taking that work, improved it and built iPad. What we've done is we started with Mac OS X and we created from it a version called iOS, which we used in the iPhone. And we invented some new things and we've perfected it over the last several years and it's now used in the iPad as well. Well, what we like to do is we're inspired by some of those innovations in the iPad and the iPhone. We'd like to bring them back to the Mac. And ever since then, this has been a pattern Apple's followed. For the past decade plus, improvements to one platform are often adapted and brought to others to improve those products. The parallax effect of app icons on tvOS becomes the 3D app icon effect on Vision Pro. The picture-in-picture -picture implementation from iPad eventually made its way to iPhone. Control Center from iPad OS and iOS eventually made its way to Mac OS. I would anticipate this trend continuing, and we'll see some of the improvements in Vision OS coming back to iPad OS and probably some of the other platforms. Like, I'd love to see the additional drag handle flexibility come to iPad, and maybe even the bottom window bar for Windows and Vision OS might be cool to see in iPad OS. So that's all I really had to say about Vision Pro and how it relates to iPad. As always, thank you for sticking with me. If you could like and subscribe on your way out, that would help me out a bunch. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications of when I post a new video. And with that, I will catch you in the next one.